Hey, uh, I needed the weekend off. It's um, Monday afternoon and I'm recording this in between thunderstorms, doing a little bit of drinking, got my craft gin, it's blueberry infused, that's why it's colored. And I just saw in the news that Kelly Preston died. And I don't know why this celebrity death um, affects me quite so much. Um, she's 57. She was 57. I'm 45. I, I, that seems, it seems like not that far apart. She had breast cancer, had it for two years, leaves behind a loving husband and uh, two surviving children. And it really makes me think about how when we love somebody, the greatest risk we ever take in life is loving somebody because we know that ultimately we either will or can lose them, right? When you love somebody, you have to walk side by side with that fear of loss. That's just part of the bargain. So, <clears throat> and what I'm going to say next has nothing to do with Kelly Preston. Kelly Preston just made me think of this idea of, of love and loss. But I've been thinking for the past four or five days about um, Whitney Houston. <laughs> Not Whitney Houston exactly, but you remember that song, The Greatest Love of All? And I'll never forget when that song became popular. It must have been, what, 1984, 85, 84-ish? Because I remember being at my, uh, my kitchen table in my old house. I was in elementary school and my older stepsister was over. And she, uh, she was an adult, and she was telling us some of the lyrics. And she really felt like this was such a powerful song and a powerful lesson. You know, this idea that the greatest love of all is the love we have for ourselves. So what if you love somebody who is careless with themselves? What if you love somebody who does not love themselves enough to care for their own presence in the world. And some of this, I think, I keep coming back to these stories, right? Romeo and Juliet, Pyramus and Thisbe. I keep coming back to these stories where there is self-harm. Because I think one of the things that gnaws at me about these stories that are about love, which as we know, there's like no love. It's just like longing and... Uh, Love is an action, right? Love is the daily stuff, right? As we've talked about, love love isn't a feeling. Love is action, right? And the action in these stories is suicide. And you have to think about that for a minute. You know, what does it tell you about the value that you hold for yourself, that your first instinct, and that you actually follow through on, which takes some doing, particularly in these stories, the way they do it, um, is, is to kill themselves. Now, there are many ways that people can be careless with themselves. Right? It doesn't have to be suicide. It could be a drinking problem. It can be incredibly just poor lifestyle choices. It can be just sort of ongoing recklessness, impulsiveness. When a person's first response to pain is to self-destruct, that tells you something about the care right, that they have for themselves. Now, we've all been there. We've all been in such immense amounts of pain that we do things that aren't good for us. We don't do them over the long term. I'm having this drink on a Monday afternoon. I'm not going to have five, six, seven, ten more, and I'm not going to do it every day, right? We all have our initial responses to pain, but they're not a lifestyle. A lifestyle that it is ongoing response to pain is a problem. And I'm trying to figure out how to tie this all together, and hopefully it will come through as I keep talking. 
because I need to make sense of this. I finished over the weekend this novel, um, The Man Who Saw Everything. And <sighs> the main character, whose name is Saul Adler, um, and he's the first person narrator, seems to be rather careless with love. I think that's like pretty, he seems to like fall easily for different people at different times. And that's not a judgment. That's just sort of who he is. But there's one moment when he's in the former East Germany and it's a year before the wall comes down and he's staying at the home of somebody who's doing some translating for him. And he falls in love with this man whose name is Walter. And he decides to write Walter this love letter, um, kind of declaring his feelings for him, which, you know, in East Germany in 1988, may be really not the best idea just to take your thoughts and feelings and put them on paper, especially when you don't know who's listening, who's watching. I mean, Nastasi is sort of always there in the background. Um, and there's this moment when they're in a car together. Oh, I have this bookmarked. They're in a car together, and Saul, who's the main character, is in the, is in the back seat of the car. And the driver and Walter, the man that Saul has fallen in love with, are having a conversation. And um, I have this book marked. But the essence of it is that, um, no, there it is. The driver says to Walter, your angel sleeping in the back seat writes you careless letters. Yes, Walter replied. He doesn't care about his own life, so he doesn't care about the lives of others. He doesn't care about his own life, so he doesn't care about the lives of others. And something in that, another kind of like literary gut punch moment, doesn't care about his own life. So he doesn't care about the lives of others. Now, one interesting thing that happens in this story is that Saul ends up parenting two children, one by his uh, former girlfriend in England and one by this Walter's sister, actually, in, in East Germany. Neither one of these women choose to raise their children with Saul. They both choose to kind of escape Saul and go somewhere else to raise their children without him. Um, and <laughs> he's careless with his own life. Of course, he's going to be careless with the lives of others. So, of course, these women who have also loved him in their way take this life inside of them, inside of them that was part of him and go elsewhere with it. Because how on earth could he be careful with somebody else's life since he's not careful with his own? You know, our children are the best of us. We want our children to do better than we did. Um, yeah. And these women choose to take their children and raise them away from Saul. He is careless with his own life. And several times in, in this novel, this is sort of the recurring theme, is he like walks in front of a car on Abbey Road and gets hit by it, and then all these crazy things start happening. Um, careless with his own life. So what does it say when we're careless about our own lives? And why are we compelled to love people who are careless with their lives? I mean, maybe the greatest love of all, love for self, is really and truly the greatest love of all because it allows us to truly love other people. It's not about how well we love ourselves. It's about that our ability to love ourselves directly translates into our ability to love other people well. Someone who is careless with themselves will never be careful with you. Never. They're careless with themselves. They will never care for you. They will never be careful with you you will lose them. That's the lesson, right? Just be careful. <laughs>